in the drop zone section of the stream. We'll do that later on as, uh-oh, uh-oh, better start introducing these players because there's an SCV starting to move out onto the map. To the top left-hand side, our pink Protoss player already took down his opponent here once today with a 2-0. Can he do it again? To the top left, it's Hostum. And to the bottom right-hand side from Team Liquid, give it up for the Blue Terran player, Euthermal. Game one of the best of three is going to feature some proxy action. Going to be a proxy barracks to start things off. And I guess we'll see potentially a factory coming up as a follow-up. Also proxy. We'll see how exactly it wants to go. There was a while where you used to proxy the barracks and then build your factory at home and then proxy the starport too. So we'll see what he wants to get done here. Is obviously so far not seeing what Harleston wants to get done just yet. Looks to be an expansion early. And as if this probe coming out, he'll probably rally it. Uh, he's going to rally into gas. He should move to the low ground soon to take his Nexus, though. There isn't really anything he... Uh, I guess he's going to build a cyber core super quick, but that'd be kind of strange. He also doesn't have anything on the low ground, so... There we go. Probe is moving down again. Maybe a little bit late with that. Yeah, he could have been down there and had the Nexus built already, so... Or starting to build already, so... Small stick is going to see this Nexus dropping. Harston. Send that up. It's going to be a Marine on the proxy barracks. Factory now starting to build up too as Harston. Not going to be caught off guard by a proxy as he scouts around in this direction. We'll come back over and he will end up seeing this barracks and factory. So this is a big scout here right away as Harston now knows what he's playing against. And he can start to react to it just that little bit faster. Reactor building on the barracks. And I imagine this will be a complete proxied 1-1-1 as Harston just going to instantly cancel the Nexus. And look to defend this off of one base. So Austin will look to defend this off one base. Two more gates coming down. Will make life a bit awkward for Euphermal. Who obviously now has to fight into this situation. Which is not going to be super easy for him to fight into. Three gates on one base. The Protoss is pretty defensive. So see what he wants to try and do. Cyclone will start to build a starport to follow up as well. He's still going to commit to it. This is still very much still going to come down to a bit of a micro battle. You imagine out of the starport too. Well, actually, it could be a medevac or a liberator. The medevac will add on a lot of micro potential to this. The liberator will just give him a bit more of a steady, sturdy push going forward. So, you family will know that the uh, 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 the nexus here was cancelled. You will have seen that with the marine just previously. Three marines pressing forwards, and we'll try and maybe get some damage onto this mothership core nice and quickly. If you could catch that, that would be fantastic, of course. There's an SCV coming up the ramp. Game paused. As apparently we're going to have to recover. Because of a problem with the French casters. <laughs> That's, um, a little bit awkward. Every screen. Let's jump back into this. Obviously, Euphemia in the midst of a very aggressive attack right now. Very aggressive attack. Looking to see what he can get done. As the game will finish recovering here momentarily. And we can resume the situation. So it's exactly where we just were. There's three, two, one will be counted. And we're going to have another three, two, one countdown. And Harston will just pick up the kill on that SCV right there. Uh oh, Adept has to pull back though. So here comes the Cyclone. Now, the interesting part about this is obviously going to be trying to not die to the pylon. And that's going to be the part for Euphim as he tries to push through this at some point. As losing a couple of Marines, two more Marines popping out. And the production tab of Medivac on the way to help out with the micro of this army. As an SCV will pull forwards, will be able to repair this Cyclone up. The robot facility dropping down from Harston as well. So back underway. And looking pretty crazy at this point is, well, again, I mean, behind this, I mean, Newfound looking maybe think about starting to expand, but all of his tech is on this side of the map. Now building the tech lab on the factory, perhaps looking to move in towards some siege tank play here as a follow-up to this and to start slowly sieging forwards with a continued push. He's actually going to start elevating up in towards the main. Marines and Cyclones will find a position where there is not going to be any pylons in position, a nice little play from Youthfilm was actually kind of sick because now you can pick away at a gateway or two without being in range of the pylons, which are obviously one of the bigger issues in this sort of situation in this game for the Terran player. So this is quite nice. You're going to see one Cyclone drop down to the low ground as he is just going to start elevating out to Youthfilm. Kind of just buying time and pressuring a little bit further here. Uh, Tech Lab now finished up, but he supply blocked momentarily 
As that depot finishes, he will, I think he actually just called down supply to help speed it up. But he is going to siege tank out now. A liberator on the way as well. An immortal already here though. And I mean, you have to feel that life is a bit difficult for Dufemble at the moment. Trying to keep on fighting against this first cyclone. Will drop now. As the second cyclone going to be forced backwards. Marine still trying to fight here. Medivac to lift up that cyclone at the last moment. Still just taking trades. Now the cyclone drops and the marines keep on disappearing. Feels as though Harstom has enough to push this away. I mean, a tank about to finish up. It will go into siege mode right away. Marines will drop to try and help fight this, but is it going to be enough? The tank will disappear so quickly to the Immortal Liberator is about to pop out. And I mean, if he can maybe pick up a Stalker kill or two, maybe there's something there for him, but it's going to be very difficult as I think Harstom just scouting this initially had a great response to it. As Euphemal will just find himself being overcharged. And he'll tap out of this game. Harstom picks up game one of the best of three. Pros in it. A couple of pros players in the Korean group though, which could make a difference is once again we're gonna see a quick push across the map from our Terran player to the top left hand side from Team Liquid. Give it up for you Fermal. This time's gonna be still just the one SCV pushing across. And as we have to the bottom right hand side, the pink Protoss player, it is Harston. The Dutch showdown here today for the second time, the rematch of this series. Gateway is starting to build up in the main, and you feel we're going to proxy to the far right-hand side of the map this time around. So again, he actually did this the last time I remember casting these guys together. I believe it was, again, some sort of IEM qualifier or something, and you feel well, three games in a row against Harstom did the proxy build and just uh, went for kind of proxy cycle and shenanigans time and time again. Harstom seeming to have learned his trick as... This time, because it's such a small map, he's just going to scout straight across. Because if he gets across, he and sees there's no barracks, etc. in the main. Then he already knows that it's going to be a proxy. And that's, you know, the information he needs. So, pushing across. First probe, we'll look to see what's going on. As it pops up into the main base. And we'll just have a little bit of a look around to see what's happening. So, popping straight up here into the main. And again just going to be seeing it uh, again recognizing what's going on basically that there's a proxy on the map second probe scouting too awesome already actually up on double gas maybe he was actually looking to proxy a stargate here and now he just uses this probe to figure out that there is a proxy down this time it's just a proxy reaper so probably a factory to build at home in the near future and then maybe the starport to follow up as a proxy but we'll have to see is i'm just going to be seeing the uh sev just rallying patrolling on the natural expansion this pro pulling back over here as we see the factory starting up to build. And again, the Ripper about to pop and jump up in towards the natural. And then to move over in towards the main. As the barracks will actually land to just block the natural expansion. So, Rack's going to land to block the natural. First, Reaper pops into the main and doesn't go in towards the pylon, which could be overcharged to put a very quick end to this proxy Reaper shenanigans. Yeah, I mean, with the scout early in the cyber core before Nexus, etc., it just means that u will There's very limited options, but... Pylon's not in positions that are guaranteed a Reaper kill, which means Ufilm can still skirt the edges. Factory building back at home. We'd be surprised to see the Starport building over here as SCV is going to hide in the corner of the base and surely not going to build something here, right? No. I was going to say, it's a little bit of an extreme proxy Starport if he's going to build in the base. He's just going to build the Starport in the main then, as we see the Reaper still moving around. I mean, the fact he's still blocking the low ground is still pretty awesome with this barracks. I mean, he can block that Nexus for a long time with this. As we do see the Reaper still just diving and dodging. Overcharge coming down on the high ground pylon. Reaper gets taken down. SCV though will be able to pick up information as the game continues. Has already seen the Stargate. And that's why he's producing a wooden mine to begin with out of the uh, f factory. We're still yet to see what exactly the Starport is going to stop producing right away. Maybe just a Viking? No, going to be the Medivac. So Medivac coming up as an Adept and a ship core work the way through this barracks. And Reaper will try and come out of it once again. Send up into that as this probe still moving around. He actually takes his third base as his natural. So he's going to pop down an Exus anyways as this Oracle looking for a way in. Not going to run into the initial widow mine position on the edge of the base. And you found, well, he already has an engineering bay and a turret in the mineral line. So and that's already fairly safe for him. It's, oh man, widow mine's unburrowed at a really unfortunate time. And I mean, if he'd stayed burrowed, that Oracle might have been on a direct kill course. Uh, or on a direct death course, I suppose. As SCV still just scouting around. Barracks comes over. Does see the expansion now over in that third location, which of course makes this a bit of a weird game. As this Medivac coming down to the south, and we'll be looking to drop in towards the main in the next couple of moments. A couple of Widow Mines to look to see what he can do. So these two Widow Mines will begin to 
unloading a moment or so. Look to see what damage he can get done. But there's an adept in position. There's a mothership core in position. And Ethan was just going to back out of there. Phoenix production on the way. And it feels as though if the Stargate opening, you, you know, Harsom at this point can start to transition into a very standard sort of Phoenix adept setup. Two Widowmine is pretty much the only real mobile anti-air still for Euphermal on the map, considering his barracks are still floating around in the middle of nowhere. Which does mean that losing those would be somewhat problematic, as now who's going to time out? That's me. That's not great. All right. So, um, basically, Euphermal was in a little bit of trouble because, like, he's got Phoenix and Oracles chasing back his uh, medevac with, like, Widow Mines inside. And so Oracles just managed to make it into that base. And they delayed the CC a little bit, apparently. He's actually got medevac still across the map and is just going to unbur and reburrow mines here a little bit to buy some time. Does only get one probe there in the end. And again, guys, at the moment, we are just streaming from the German stream to try and give you guys the rest of this game, basically, so... And that's why you do see the uh, kind of extra sponsors that obviously aren't really ours and so on. And that's why we're not going to have game sound for a little while. As we do just have well, a couple more adepts warping in here. So a couple of adepts warping in. We're going to see the robo still building up from Harstom as well. I'm just going to see uh, this widow mine's about to get another shot off actually. Takes down just one more probe and now will be cleaned on up. So it's getting cleaned up there as we see the missile turret on the way reactor building as well. And still just building up to see how this will uh, follow up right now. As a couple of devs going to move out from the right-hand side. And Probe's still just mining away over on the side as well. Another couple of wooden mines into the main base. As Euphilm is still trying to pressure here. Trying to find his way back into this. But down 12 workers. Down an army. It's not a pretty situation for our Terran. Who's going up against this Phoenix Adept composition in the near future. I mean, we're talking about Stimpak and Combat Shields only just now starting. Forge and Twilight about to finish. So I guess by the time Glaives, etc. comes into play. It's going to be pretty, pretty similar. And as we're going to be seeing the uh, Phoenix and Oracles coming through and just chasing down a medevac. A little bit of a shot, but doesn't kill anything. Just a little bit of splash damage and one Phoenix getting very low. And we do just have the Immortal on the way out. And Nexus being taken on the natural expansion as well. And again, another couple of Widow Mines just on the way up. Plus one and a Resonating Glaives on the way out from Harstom. So still getting that set up and ready to go. And uh, just going to be seeing these Phoenix and Oracles. Still just moving around, looking to see where they can get to. So, moving all over the place as uh, we still just see Ufenel trying to set up himself. His natural finally ready to go, but we're talking about a third base finishing up for the Prolos player. And Ufenel without really any kind of presence on the map to go and deny that or anything at this point. And you're going to see if Viking and Oracle just going to be trying to deflect as a widow mine once again gets taken down here. Phoenix again looking for a little bit of an opportunity to get some damage done. Doesn't find anything though still. As we have got the Phoenix. Going to pick off a Viking. I mean again just picking up more and more damage basically at this point. A revelation on the high ground too. Catching a whole bunch of Marines. You see Widow Mines once again picking up about three for workers kill across. Three worker kills across the map. As the Phoenix now coming through and Medivac starting to take some more damage. So Medivac taking a little bit more damage here as we're still seeing the uh, the plus one upgrade. The Resonating Glaives coming on up. Going to be finishing very soon. I'm going to see three extra gateways still just coming down for our Protoss player as well. So four, three, four extra gates coming on into play. I'm just going to be seeing. You can just send up into this looking to see how things will uh, continue on. I still feel as though Harstom's in a great little position to play forwards from. I'm just going to be seeing a Liberate on the way in production from Euphemal as well. To try and set up into something just a little bit extra right here. Stimpak, Combat Shields. Still just uh, now finishing, so it does give Euphemal something to work with. Upgrades pretty even. I'm a little bit worried about Euphemal pushing across the map. I mean, he's attacking into Glaive and plus one of his opponent. With these extra gates finishing soon as well, I mean, Harstom's really going to have the production just start pouncing on this army. So he's going to start having the ar uh, production to pounce on this army in a moment or two, and already you can see he's just going to jump right on top of it. A couple of Widowmines do get a good chunk of adepts to begin with. There's just so much here from Harsom. Now the Phoenix coming through as well. Lifting up a few extra Marines to try and help out. Good target firing from Euphermal. Taking down one Phoenix after the other. And now the Oracle's coming through with some uh, Pulsar Beams just to actually help out with the damage onto this. You're going to be seeing the last uh, Widowmine getting dropped off there. will also get picked off. 
Feels as though Euphemal lost a lot more than Harsom, though. As we're going to be seeing the uh, units from Harsom still just gathering up together, still just looking to see what's going to happen next. As we're going to be seeing the Mothership Corps just sat overhead and just patrolling backwards and forwards. We're seeing Medivac coming down to the south side, too. Looking to see what else he can get up to also. So Medivac down to the south side. Looking to see if he can get a little bit more done here. As we have got. Plus one armor on the way up. Yeah, plus one armor on the way up. Means the is dropping down once again. Pylon will get taken down. As the Pylon gets shot down here. You're going to see Adepts. Taking a little bit more damage as well. So a bit more damage being done onto these Adepts as Marines. I mean the reality is this drops does not really didn't do enough. And Euphem will still struggle to find a day. Of uh. You find a way of kind of getting damage done, I suppose. Awesome holds a plus one, plus one, uh, well, plus one armor lead now. With his, both his 1-1 one, one upgrades finished up. Phoenix still just sitting up in the skies. And we do have, again, more Phoenix just on the way out, so. More Phoenix on the way out, still adept and immortal and some stalkers. Still just such a large army here for Austin to work with his. Well, I mean, I guess you film will stabilize, right? But I guess my real concern for Euphemal is the fact that he's played against this composition a couple times today, and he didn't really look great while playing against it. I mean, he really kind of went f as far as he could and hung in as long as he could against Hossum, um in that first series in the second game. And as we see, big drop from Euphemal. I mean, this is the sort of drop that can put you right back in the game, though. It's also the sort of drop that's going to force a fight that could just end the game if it doesn't go well for you, so... Let's see these adepts. Not even Shade and Four is just pushing right on into it. As we'll see the Phoenix, they're going to try and shut down, I guess, Medivax to stop a lift up and leave. I guess that's sort of part of the issue here as Euphermal seems to be losing quite a lot. I mean, the Liberator is doing a good job. There's actually three Liberators here, two of them stacked on top of each other. Something I didn't quite see myself there for a moment or so, but now we're going to see those Liberators now taken down. And, well, we're going to be seeing Euphermal still down in supply overall as 1 1 upgrades. Finished up for him, so even up in that regard, he's going to try and attack towards the third, but now Adept Shade and Forwards once more. Stalker's going to try and get rid of and will succeed in getting rid of this Liberator's Widow Mines onto the Adepts once again, though. Euphemal taking quite a significant army supply lead, and actually Harsom's army started to disappear. Some messy fights from Harsom, some good plays by Euphemal, and suddenly he's breaking through to potentially tie up this series, and for the first time today... Doesn't know to press play and stuff, and a people like AFK, it just it really makes like cutting out for a few seconds so much worse than it ever was in the past. Like usually your stream would just start playing again, so it's kind of not so bad, right? Because like, yeah, you know your stream comes back, people don't have to press play, people are AFK are back right away, and it doesn't affect your viewership too much. Now though, it's like nah, it's just going to completely ruin everything. So <sighs> sorry about that, guys. Again, I mean, just internet completely cut out. Just had no internet for like a few minutes, which was weird because then. I was still able to kind of put out a whole bunch of video, apparently, even though we had no internet, which is uh, interesting, strange, different. As we set on up and look to see what will happen in game three. Let's introduce these players, guys. The bottom left-hand side, the Red Terran. Proxy for the third game in a row. It's Euphermal. Bottom right, blue Protoss, it is Harstam. Let's see what he's going to be uh, coming in with here. As we have the first Rax is proxying already, and Harstam already just double gassing it. Euphermal just going full proxy mode here in this series, just does not stop. We'll see if he wants to proxy everything this time around. Perhaps not as the probe scouts early once again. It's a very different map to Paladino. So, I mean, he may still choose to proxy. I guess we'll find out very shortly. Looks as though... Marine starts and looks like the factory is indeed going to build right next to this barracks. I mean, obviously from Halston though, what a setup. Double gas right away, Cybercore early. I wonder if he even just commits to the Stargate on this side of the map this time, because Euphemal doesn't have anything here to defend against this quickly. At the same time, Halston maybe doesn't want to commit to that as well, if he feels as though he needs more units to defend back at home. And he's going to put it down though, so Stargate on the way. And there's Euphemal just with one Marine out here, reactor building, factory on the way behind it too. Looking very similar to Abyssal Reef so far, as we have, again, this Stargate still, still uh, coming up to being about halfway done here. We're going to see this one Marine from Euphemal pushing forwards, probe taking some shots. And actually, that probe being pushed all the way up to the top side. So, probe again pushed away now as the factory starts to build up a cycle, and I guess a starport coming in as well. If you're going to proxy the factory, you may as well proxy the starport too. It's probably the 
least important of buildings to have proxied for the most part. In most situations, at least. And let's see, the Cyclone is uh, starting to build on up here, about halfway done. And we see the Mothership Core and Stalker from Harsom just coming on down and setting up again, just lacking to try and, uh, well, defend against this as Marines continue to gather up together. And Oracle just on the way out, so Oracle just about to pop and move on in towards the main base in the next few moments. And SUV from Ufil coming in towards the mineral line, and well, here we go, pushing forward. Second panel will come up towards the front. Overcharge will be popped very early, but Ufil will preemptively pull him back. This time, only one Cyclone before the tech lab goes into that nice and quickly, but here we go. Oracle into the main, and Ufil will is going to lose. Well, not every SUV. He can pull away, and he can wait for the Oracle to run out of energy. Then there's a second Oracle on the way, so time is ticking for Ufimal to get to a position where he can start kind of doing some damage himself. You know, he has to get up that ramp, he has to do something to start hurting Harstom, otherwise he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Gets back to mining as this Oracle runs out of energy, but the second Oracle on the way. This one going to go back home, so Ufimal still mining, albeit 10 workers behind. Does he have enough army to push up here? Once again, maybe an overcharge very quickly. I think it has to be an overcharge very quickly here, really, from Harstom, because if he doesn't overcharge it... I mean, he doesn't have many units because of the fact he's using this Oracle and making Stargate across the map. So, it's one of the positives for you, Phil, but he doesn't force an overcharge. Harston very patient and good micro to keep his stalkers alive. Now a tank pushing forwards, though. You Phil is still very much so in this, despite his lower worker count. This Oracle will be ready to go once again, though, shortly. So, it's still important he gets something done soon as this tank starts to work its way through this pylon. And that's going to mean that he can get up the ramp, at least. And getting up the ramp is a big part of this. I'm just going to be seeing, again, the siege tank moving forwards, and Marines as well taking a little bit of damage. Stalker shooting. Bunker will start to come up at the front here, and so it's going to be seeing that Oracle to the side. A Void Ray on the way up as well. First Void Ray on the way up. And as we see a sec, uh, uh, well, Oracle's just flying in. Two Oracles together, doing a lot of damage, and even with the Micro on the Marines, it's not going to be enough. And there's not really any anti-air left over here. Pros will come in to get rid of the siege tank, and that's Euphermal. Without any units really left over, one cycle and he can try and micro around, but his bunker won't finish. Uh, sorry, indeed, the second Voidry on the way up. I thought I was right with that, and I doubted myself. Evil just doesn't really have an answer to this anymore, and pushing on through is just going to be too much from Harsom, as you can see. It's easy to clean this up. I mean, Evil is still fighting until the very end, I guess, from Harsom's point of view. He's actually... Does he not have Warpgate, by the way? No, so I'm just going to be sat on just slow stalker production, but especially the Voidry makes uh, life a lot more difficult as... Uh, I'm just going to be seen still. I mean, I will try and push, but now Voidray over here is just going to continue to pick his way through <laughs> multiple workers, which obviously is not great. And, uh, well, Halston starts to deal with the cycle and the Marines, but man, it's such, on such low health. It's not going to be too difficult as he should really keep that uh, Voidray next to the SCVs. And you finally picking away at these gateways. Tank pushing forwards as well. Viking on the way out too. Overcharge will buy a little bit of time. I mean,. It's still somehow not over, as an Oracle picks up a couple of reinforcements. I mean, this is the last, uh, this is the last, uh, gateway of Harsom at the moment, by the way. So he doesn't actually have any production other than the Stargate at the moment. And there is a decent number of Marines up. A Viking, too, will make a big difference, especially against Oracles, which are producing at the moment. And one Void Ray across the map won't help much in this defense, either. I mean, it sounds stupid, but at the moment, Ufemel is still sort of making this happen. Another pylon is about to go down if he gets vision back on it. Dancing with this Viking. I mean, the Viking is so important to this at this point. Oracle and Void Rays come on through. The Cyclone will have to help with the anti-air, but I mean, the Mothership Core... Sorry, the, uh... Fema Bobby... Oh, my God, what am I saying? The Void Ray goes down. Marines drop in. Cyclone falls as well. Now only eight army supply left. This is all Euthermal has. Four Marines and a Medivac and another Viking. Uh... Truly not possible, right? Another Void Ray starts to build, and I think that's the real issue here. Oracle coming back as well, and Marines start to drop. And he lifts, he backs away, but again, at the end of the day, that's pretty much just going to be it. Viking drops back down, Stalkers kill the Medivac. Euphermal taps out, and Harson takes the series two games to one, and will be advancing.